Okay, well, thank you, Henrik, for the kind introduction. I'm just one <clears throat> of many authors here, uh, of which uh, the list is too long to go through, but you can quickly scan through uh, the main contributors of the uh, new functional mockup interface uh, standard 3.0. And today I have the pleasure and uh, problem to introduce to you all the new things in 15 minutes. So um, pardon if this is going to be a bit hasty uh, and very brief. In essence, it's uh, a teaser to look into the proper document and see uh, for yourself what we have to offer in the new FMI 3.0 standard. Um, I will motivate some of the changes um, at the beginning and then dive into the list of improvements as I've specified them here. It's essentially um, a longer list <clears throat> that I will also uh, uh, label as we go along uh, with respective motivations. And at the end, um, I'll give you uh, a roadmap and some resources for how to continue. Um, so FMI, for those that are new, uh, is essentially simple plumbing for simulation and simulation models. And uh, so what, you, what we have done and we've tried, and we're still trying to do is bring some sort of order and easier pluggability of models into uh, co-simulation and modeling tools. And with that, uh, freeing up engineering resources to actually care about the model itself um, and then export and someone else who doesn't care about the model be able to reuse it. Uh, apparently, apparently we uh, hit some nerve uh, when we developed this, and now more than 150 tools are supporting FMI and the various flavors of it. And uh, this is what causes quite some uh, pressure to allow new use cases. As you have more users, as tool vendors well understand, uh, you have a lot more uh, requests for improved um, capabilities. And I grouped here. Uh, the four main thrusts. One is adding virtual control units into simulations and <clears throat> how to make that more natively um, sort of capable if, as an FM, FMU. Uh, we've had uh, virtual control units inside FMUs from the start, but it never felt quite natural. And so we wanted to support that use case better. Uh, these blue labels will appear in later slides when I talk about the individual features that we have added. And these uh, use cases will then motivate some of the additional features. Advanced co-simulation is uh, stemming from the idea that many of the implementations and importers actually do use uh, co-simulation just like most exporters support exporting co-simulation modules or FMUs. And as such, it was more important to get co-simulation more performance uh, and accuracy oriented. So we added features to allow advanced co-simulation algorithms. Um, we also see more and more multi-FMU simulations, and we wanted to be able to synchronize better between the FMUs. And we see new applications in machine learning and AI, as we've seen in the uh, invitational speech. So there's performance and accuracy reasons <clears throat> for improvements and, of course, new applications. There's overlap of features that we introduce. And then there's those that only fall into one category. And let's get started with the new interface type, scheduled execution. Um, in addition to the model exchange and co-simulation interface types, we are now adding a way to couple multiple FMUs that, have, that use one external scheduler. And this is specifically important if you have large systems that need to be coordinated tightly with respect to 
um, sort of model partitions running uh, appropriately uh, scheduled with one another. And we'll get to the how to schedule those when we get to clocks as well. Um, we have now, in addition to the types that we knew from FMI 1 and 2, we have now native support for the different integer and floating point fitness types. We've added binary types that are essentially opaque uh, binary uh, objects. And we have clocks. We also, um, because uh, we've seen this in many of the simulations, uh, flattening as we did for 1.0 and 2.0, flattening arrays and, and vectors is a very time consuming uh, and expensive uh, operation on both ends. We are now supporting arrays and vectors natively of multiple dimensions. Uh, dimensional, dimensionality cannot change, but the, the, the length of each dimension, that can. So if FMUs and importers support uh, this operation, you can even change uh, the, the, the length of each dimension of the arrays. Terminals is a semantic grouping on top of uh, basic FMU variables. So terminals are not turning in, the inputs and outputs into a causal models. They're just a way of nicely grouping uh, uh, sets of inputs and outputs into semantically meaningful bundles of variables. This is especially uh, important for importers that can then offer users a much more um, convenient way of connecting large sets of variables. For co-simulation, we added event handling, just like we had it for model exchange uh, in 2.0. And you see now in the state diagram that in co-simulation we have event mode. And this allows us to be much more flexible in the way we drive our systems of, uh, through the co-simulation steps, including abbreviating a step from within the FMU or even from uh, the importer in order to um, pick more meaningful step sizes and finding events uh, during the simulation. <clears throat> you can see here uh, the intermediate update mode. Uh, we'll get to this right now. The intermediate update mode is a way to exchange inputs and outputs between models without stopping and reinitializing um, an integrator uh, algorithm inside the FMU or even outside, <coughs> such that um, you can improve performance significantly in order, uh, 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 you can improve uh, performance significantly because you do not have to restart uh, variable step size algorithms and other um, performance in inhibiting um, step interruption processes. We introduced clocks and clocks are essentially a way to synchronize uh, events across FMUs. They carry the information and allow uh, without floating point inaccuracies to coordinate uh, sort of event modes of different FMUs and then solving algebraic loops even across FMUs during such event modes in a robust way. For scheduled execution, clocks have a slightly different meaning. There, the clocks are essentially a way to trigger uh, model partition computations inside the FMU. We have different kinds of clock types. Uh, I've sort of listed them here. I won't go through all of them, but it's, of course, there's time based clocks that are essentially defined by the FMU but triggered by the importer. There's the periodic kinds and the aperiodic ones. And then there's um, triggered 
uh, clocks, which essentially are raised uh, either by an FMU or by an importer by some means, but trigger an event inside of an FMU on an input clock that is triggered. Adjoint derivatives, as we have heard in the previous uh, talk, allow uh, more improved computation of derivatives, mostly for AI <clears throat> and machine learning um, the applications. It's essentially a way to uh, extract meaningful information from the FMU for special applications. We have struggled for a long time to delineate what we should pack into the FMI standard, uh, because many of the application domains outside FMI have been asking for special handling of their needs. And at some point, the idea of layered standards was used in order to keep the core standard, the core FMI 3.0 standard, relatively clean from the needs of special uh, domains. And we are now uh, using hooks inside of the FMI 3.0 standard to allow more advanced or other semantics to be added on top of the FMI 3.0 standard more elegantly. So you can package um, additional description formats into the um, zip in the, into the FMU zip format. Um, and we have tested this with three proposals that you can see uh, uh, as a pull requests or even emerged already for some automotive domains here for XCP inside a virtual ECU um, the FMUs or how to organize network signals um, for FMUs. This can show you what a, uh, such a layout standard approximately looks like. And we're hoping that this will simplify the, uh, the, the or keep the core standard simple while additional uh, complexities can be added on top of it. Um, I, um, how are we doing on time? Yeah, well, almost two. So let me skip this. You can read it uh, later. So <clears throat> let's look at the roadmap. Uh, the FMI 3.0 beta 2 is available now, for, has been for a few weeks. We have held two plug fests this year, and two more are planned in two, 2021. And we do actually are plan we, we are planning to release FMI 3.0 early 2022. Uh, so this is where we're kind of starting to commit ourselves that we will get to the point of release early next year. If you are interested where we are at, um, you can look at these um, websites here. Um, we even have the prototype implementations made available um, so that we can test your own prototype implementations against ours. You can participate in our plug fests. You just email me or anyone on the FMI uh, the steering committee list, and we will welcome you with open arms, helping us to make sure the standard doesn't have any glitches and help us to make sure that um, whatever is problematic in there, we can fix before we release. <clears throat> 